That's Bruce Campbell as a Kmart-style sales clerk, suddenly transported back to the Middle Ages. And in the style of the Back to the Future movies, but without that series wit, he confronts these old English types with a modern weapon. Wow, we haven't seen that before. Like, what? But there isn't a single interesting human being in the film. There's also very little wit, and this surprised me, no real love interest. What? Bruce Campbell, he's a pretty much of a stiff, I think. Like, what? I've seen the real thing in real life. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Did I ever tell my 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 Tom uh, uh, Tom Sullivan Tom Sullivan's story in, I don't in any of our think so. programmings? Uh, oh, so as it's early two thousand, mid two thousands, early two thousand two thousand four. Yeah, I think I was at the 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 Phoenix Horror Convention. It was the like famous the, Joe Pilato Convention. The famous Joe Pilato Convention. This was a convention. It was the first annual horror convention in Phoenix, Arizona, and it was it was very well miss. Uh, it was mismanaged um, <laughs> where they didn't advertise it well. And they had like 50 big horror movie stars and like a hundred people came <laughs> over like two days. So literally there was this rows and rows of, uh, of famous horror people. I could list them all here, but it'll take too long. I got to tell them a story <laughs> and the Tom Sullivan story. <laughs> and I just bought a new camera. It was a Canon Digital Rebel. I was, I was taking pictures of everything. I've lost all these photos, by the way. That's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate because we walked around and we took pictures with everybody. Stars of Dawn of the Dead. Stuart Gordon was there. D. Wallace. Everybody. who The who's who of horror movies was there. And Tom Sullivan. Jenny, all what? the stars are here. It's true. Beardy Man. Claude Racine. Dax Flame. Uh... Tom Sullivan, the artist who created all the drawings in the Evil Dead book and the, the book itself movie. from the original movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was there and he had a little station. He does his own original art. And I just I took pictures of everything. I took pictures of all of his stuff and I was laid out. So I was just bored. And um, at one point, he starts like freaking out. And we're like, what's what's wrong with him? You know, and um, and then it turns out that. He was he was having pan a panic attack because someone had stolen one of the pages from the Evil Dead book, and it was the page with the skull. That's the most iconic one. The most iconic one, and because he, he had them all laid out on this table, yeah, and um, for people to look at. So then the like the police show up because he called the cops. Oh yeah. And then um, I'm like, what's going on with Tom Sullivan? And they're like, he called the cops. Someone stole a page from the Necronomicon. <laughs> And he's like, he's like, ah, and I, and I was like, I just took pictures of it. And so w I took my camera and I used the AV outs and I plugged it into a TV that, that we had at our table and I start cycling through all my pictures. And Tom uh -huh. Sullivan comes over and the cops are there and they're like, what page was it? And, and he's watching, Tom Sullivan's watching and he's, he's like, uh, it's that one. That's the missing page. And it was the skull page. And the cop's like, so a page with the skull on it got stolen. <laughs> They didn't have uh, Brooklyn accents. I'm, just, I'm, I'm mad in it. And he's like, yeah. And then so the cop takes out his like like cop thing that he writes on, like his notepad, and he starts drawing what it looks like on his notepad. <laughs> he's like, like just for their own records <laughs> of what was stolen. And I'm like, okay, the artist who drew the skull is right there. <laughs> but... The cop is drawing the skull on his cop pad. It was very like weird. And then um, I start cycling through and I have a wider shot of how all the pictures are arranged. And then he goes over and he's, he goes, wait a minute. And he runs back to his table and he just finds it underneath a different thing. He's Jesus. like, I moved it under here. Oh my God. And then, and then all the police just go, oh. <laughs> we could have been solving real crimes. And then they left. <laughs> Like you, you solved the mystery, and then everyone was like, "You, you're oh, like a detective." Yeah, yeah. They're like you, and so uh, Tom Sullivan, he he grabbed a like a print of something and he signed it on the bottom. He said, "You rock, Tom Sullivan," and he gave it to me. He should have given you the actual page from the book. Me, yes, <laughs> you, you <laughs> earned it. Um, but it, at least uh, one of the lesser pages. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And I was like, "Who would have stolen it? There's nobody here." <laughs> <laughs> Except for Joe Pilato in his uh, in his bathrobe. <laughs> okay, now half the movie's over. That's true. No, that was worth it. Okay, you, uh, this always bothered me the continuity of Ash's close up to this wider shot because his hair doesn't match at all. 
if you look at the close-ups, it's very like matted. It's all wet, but it's like matted down. And then the wide shot, it's uh, yeah, look at that. Oh. And then every time it cuts to the uh, medium shot of him, it's completely different. It's fine. It's just something I. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just something I always notice. Yeah. See, look, it's oh, totally yeah. different. Yeah. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Who who was in charge of continuity on this film? The continuity was just ridiculous of what happens to him in this scene, in that scene. We would jump ahead and think that's what what Ash would look like. But then when we shot it, that wasn't at all how it came out. So, you know, the continuity in those movies is really all over the place. Yeah, I remember Bruce Campbell felt like a like a big movie star to me because I was into this stuff at the time. And then when I realized that he wasn't a real movie star was when he became a a regular supporting character on Ellen DeGeneres' sitcom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he like he like owned the bookstore that she worked at or something. I barely remember now, but I was like, oh, that's Bruce Campbell. His string of failed TV shows didn't clue you in? I'm trying to think because he did like Briscoe County. I think that was before he was on Ellen. Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades was right around that same era. They kept trying. They kept trying to make him a TV star and it it's just never worked. It's strange that it never worked because he is a funny motherfucker. Yeah. He's he's charismatic. He's funny at the around the time this movie was made. Like he looks like a leading man. It just never happened. I know Sam Raimi wanted him to play Dark Man, and the studio, I I, I guess the studio didn't demand they wanted someone more famous because Liam Neeson. Well, that's wasn't. probably for the best because Liam Neeson's great. He is good in that movie, but I I when it gets to the very end and it's Bruce Campbell because he puts on a mask when he's leaving the. the, the building at the very end of the movie. Yeah, I just always wished that it was him through the whole movie. And then, I think I may have mentioned this before, I went around and got, and tra- I was going to get all the signatures on my Dawn of the Dead VHS tape, which I think we used as a prop in something. We showed it. And uh, I got Ken Forey to sign it. And even though there was no one there, Ken Forey didn't even look at me. <laughs> I, I gave him 25 bucks to his, like, his handler or his son or something, and he signed it, and he was having a conversation with someone. He signed it, and, and he didn't even look at me. I was like, oh. Money, money, money. And then I went and I got Galen Ross's signature, mm. and uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Scott something is his real yeah. name. Yeah. Yes, I, I got his signature, and they were all $25 each, and then I just I just I was going to get the helicopter pilot. <laughs> And then I just said, what am I doing? <laughs> like, like, why am I spending my money on this? And so I stopped. So I have an autographed DVD with three out of four main characters. Doesn't that bother you now, though? That's not complete. It, it really doesn't. <laughs> I'm okay with it. That's fair. I just, I had a, a, like a, just a little moment where I said, what am I doing? <laughs> Uh, why is that shot so distorted? Is that just a they did some stylistic? Sort of, yeah, I mean, it was a stylistic choice, but it looks like they had an anamorphic lens on and didn't squeeze it. Yeah, right. It looks like an incorrect aspect ratio. And it's completely pointless. I don't know why they're there. Yeah, they have two like like slave women for one second. That never show up in the rest of the movie. Well, just find out who one of the producers on the film was and you'll know why they were there. <laughs> was it Harvey Weinstein? Little Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> That's that, got him in trouble. <laughs> that was his first picture. Oh, well, there's Ted Raimi on the left. Oh yeah. One of his many roles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, here's another Sam Raimi thing where it's just this one brief little bit where it's just whipping yeah. to every character for their line. They're panicking. They're panicking. Yeah, it's it's great. I don't want to die. Cause then then it's yeah, the panic is is ended with this epic uh, hero shot yeah go ahead and run run home and cry to mama (laughs) oh my god mama i love how he talks to them like in modern day slang yeah it's just he just doesn't care to look at the video when he says your shoelace is untied yeah 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 (laughs) you know your shoelace is untied I 
think he's too stupid to realize they won't know what he's talking about. It may be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's part of his arrogance. Like he's not even thinking about it. Or, or he just doesn't care. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's part of the charm, you know? Yeah. yeah. He doesn't start saying stuff about like honor and, you know, whatever. Like some someone from the dark ages might like understand. What are you going to do? Run home to your mama and cry? <laughs> There's Ted Raimi again. <laughs> He's a different character. I'll stand by ya. Uh... This was an impression I used to always do. <laughs> with, with the eyebrow raise. You can I'll count st- on my steel. <laughs> count on my steel. <laughs> I'll hold up my arms with you. <laughs> now we're just ADRing the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll bend my bow to your will, sir. I always like this piece of music for this montage here. I used to use this in a lot of my old uh, movies I made when I was a kid. Like, this score is great. It's it's, it's almost too good for this movie. Yeah. Well, the, it's the, the score you would have for theme. an actual, like, swashbuckling yeah, adventure yeah, movie. Yeah. I think this is this is another introduction of the Army of the Dead as a as a good example of when the camera's moving around. I may be bad, but I feel this is this good. is a pretty cringy line. I it mean, is. I know the movie's got it lots is. of corny stuff, but <laughs> this line in particular always bugged me. I may be bad, but I feel good. Yes, and 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 I'm Beth Davids here is like a like a real actress mm-hmm. <laughs> making her say this stupid crap. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe bad. I think I, that's what I love so much about this movie. It's just it just doesn't care. Yeah. at all. And it and it's like a relatively, at least for Sam Raimi at the time, big budget movie. Yeah, like you're making this you know medieval castle you know sword movie, and it's just complete nonsense. It has no artistic pretensions. It just no. no. Well, that's fun. that's Sam yeah. Raimi in a nutshell. Sam Raimi kind of got his start with the Coen brothers. Like one of them edited Evil Dead, and they've worked together on and off over the years. And there's this interview. I have this book of filmmaker interviews, and the interviewer was asking him about that. Like, how do you feel about the Coen brothers? They're now like these, you know, critical darlings, and they're doing these, you know, Academy Award winning movies, <laughs> and and you're making like schlock. And he's like, I don't care. I'm just trying to please an audience. I wanted to, it to be the ultimate picture of entertainment. To thrill, chill, make the audience laugh, cry, scream. Like he, Yeah, he's like the least pretentious filmmaker. He doesn't think of himself as an artist. He just, he just makes what he wants. I like that little bit where he scooches the, the, the candle over. <laughs> and this, this training sequence this is, is, so is, is also like a joke. <laughs> Like, he teaches them that one move. Yeah. And then they use it later. And then they use it. Like grown men who are part of an army don't know ha, who, he, and they're just like, it's like, it's like, again, it's like the training montage sequence. They just slapped it together. Yeah. This is, this is it. This is all we're going to do for it. The whole point of the movie is just to get to Bruce Campbell throwing around rubber skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> Oh, here, here's, this, this is all fun stuff. This is, yeah. This, this is, I think, Danny Elfman's music for this scene, but they're, they're all playing they're, these wind they're, instruments, even though none of them have lungs. Yes. <laughs> Some of them have beards. <laughs> it's fine. It's great. Was Evil Dead 2 the first modern horror comedy? Other than, obviously, like, Abbott and Costello meet the wolf now. <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, I guess there's, like, different levels of horror comedy, because, like, American Werewolf in London is a horror comedy, but that's, like, the horror in that is treated seriously. Mm. It just has, like, situational comedy. Um, I mean, Evil Dead 2 is, like, completely goofy in its horror. So, I don't know. I'm not sure when Reanimator came out. It's right around the same era. Yeah. You couldn't call or write a note. I was busy pushing bodies around, as you well know. And what would a note say, Dan? Cat dead, details later... Do you think Peter Jackson watched this for tips? You know, I remember seeing the two towers in the theater uh, and, and being reminded of Army of Darkness. Yeah. Obviously a much different type of movie, but oh, you can see that guy's eyes I in know. the mask. Yeah. No, Jay, that skeleton still has eyeballs. 
It's and an homage skin. to the Evil Dead 2 poster. That man died wearing a skeleton mask, <laughs> and he just got resurrected. Oh, okay. Like last, he died like a week ago. Now, then you got to worry about, like, the extras running off and doing weird things. And We caught two extras having sex uh, inside the castle. Because if you walk past those lights, it was the desert. There was nothing happening. So we found two guys having sex. My lord, we have discussion on both fronts. This guy on the right there is Bill Mosley, um, oh. who is in all the Rob Zombie movies, and he was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Bring me forth into thy castle. I hear this this little puppet can oh, barely God. stay on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. He's just ready to follow. They're just watching. Oh, God, don't fall, don't fall. That's one of those things where I'm picturing Sam Raimi behind the camera just laughing his head off. Yeah. Every, everybody knows and nobody cares because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and I would meet with Sam in the morning. We'd look through the boards and there'd be like a shot of ash and in the frame was like four deadites. And I went, okay, there's four deadites here. So how, how many do you want in that shot? How many do we have, buddy? Got, I've got like 175, 175 please. Okay, turn to the next page. Okay, here's a shot of Ash fighting evil Sheila. In the background there's like, I don't know, five or six deadites. What, how many should we play on? What do we have again? We've got 175. Yeah, probably should be 175, buddy. You see a lot of the, uh, the springboards when people blow up here. Yeah. Coming up. When they you see like flying. one trying to run away and you completely see the, the board that shoots him into the air. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like you can see what's happening from back where he is. Now oh, here's where we start getting into stop motion. Yeah, how do you feel about the stop motion? It's fine. I feel like if there's not a, like if you're going to do it, uh, do more of it, elaborate on it more. The entire army needed to constantly be just yeah, all stop like, motion skeletons. I mean, skeletons. it's obviously, a, a, oh yeah, there's all the springboards. Um, it's obviously kind of a, a nod to Jason and the Argonauts, yeah. which is all stop motion. So yeah, go all the way with it. There's there's a mix, or, you know, you can see the clearly there are guys in costumes running. Yeah. And I was used to, it was used to bother me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Then the other ones, the ones that in close up are just on, like, on tracks, just yeah. in front of the camera. I can't get too hung up on that for Army of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously something you can shrug off in such a goofy movie, but I always think about that. Like, they tried to layer them in some of the wide shots where it's like the full skeletons are in the foreground, yeah. guys in like skeleton costumes are a little farther away. Yeah. And then guys in just Halloween masks are way in the back of the shots. Yeah. There's a mixture. Yeah, here's where they try to, to justify it by having kind of a combination of the two. It's all right. I like stuff like this. Yeah. These shots look you great. He's got a puppet right in the foreground. Well, it's sillier. <laughs> it's so obviously a puppet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so obviously a guy in a costume. <laughs> yeah, but not as funny as the puppets. No. Oh, here's the hoo-ha. <laughs> it pays off. Uh, ooh, All the skeletons uh, just stop so they can do it. They knock the first row down. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and here we get the famous car. Uh -huh. The Oldsmobile that's been in every Sam Raimi movie. I remember when I saw because I, I loved Sam Raimi so much. And then he did the first Spider-Man movie. And I was like, oh, that's great that he's doing a, a big movie. And then seeing Uncle Ben's car was the Evil Dead car. I was like, that's that's a wonderful little nod. I'm glad that he's continued that mm -hmm. and continued to work with the same people like the, the famous train scene in Spider-Man two, the hick from evil dead two is on that train. Mm. All the way up to the his his uh, Wizard of Oz movie. There's one shot in that where it's all the three ladies from the original Evil Dead are are in it for one shot. What Wizard of Oz movie? Oh, you don't remember his famous uh, hit film Oz the Great and Powerful? I hope he makes another film so that's not his final theatrical movie. The James Franco one. Yeah, he hasn't made a movie since that. 
No, that James Franco movie. That's a remake of this movie. <laughs> we talk about that in our discussion for oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's like the same story, basically. I have no memory. That's completely fine. He did direct the pilot for Ash vs. Evil Dead, which was great. That had some classic Sam Raimi stuff in it. I'll put it on the list. Bruce Campbell's obviously too old to do some of the physical comedy stuff, but it's still the same persona. There's still some of the physical comedy stuff. A little bit of it. Yeah. He he can't do like the Evil Dead 2 flipping himself over. No. And... I remember I saw he directed a movie called The Man with the Screaming Brain, which apparently had, Bruce Campbell directed it, and he had been trying to get it made for... Oh, wait, we're going to miss the, the curly mess People throw ske- skeletons at him. They don't, they're not articulated. It's <laughs> nope. someone off camera just throwing a skeleton at him. That makes it funnier. I know. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> I'd be curious the origin of that sound effect. Like, you can pinpoint the origin of the Wilhelm scream. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called the Wilhelm scream, because of what it's originally from. Mm -hmm. But what was the first thing to use that pottery break sound effect? Somebody out there, do some research and find this out for us. It's a weird quality to it. Yeah. Where it well, it's, yeah, it's very distinct. Very distinct, yes. The best use of it is, of course, in Wet Hot American Summer. Where they use that same sound effect like 20 times. Yeah. But that man with the Screaming Brain movie that Bruce Campbell directed and he stars in it and he tries to do some of the physical stuff, but he's just a little too old and it's a little awkward and it was kind of depressing. So I'm glad that they didn't try and have him do too much of that in the new show, and it focuses more on his uh, uh, personality and his kind of cocky. I remember seeing him on a panel at a convention, and he was, when are you going to do, every other question is, when are you going to do more Evil Dead movies? Yeah. And I don't know if it was just his canned response, but he's just like, I'm too old. Yeah. It's hard for me to get up in the morning. He's just like (laughs) making all these excuses. Um, Oh, sure. I mean, I think he probably thought he was done with it at that point, because he was getting older, but then they worked that into the show, so it's fine. The, the beginning of the show is him strapping himself into a girdle to go out and pick up chicks. <laughs> yeah. Look good. Look good. Sweet. Uh-huh. <laughs> what 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 uh, network? What app do I have to get to watch this? <laughs> Stars. Stars. Yeah. Okay. You can just borrow my Blu-rays. How about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Then they don't make any money off me. (laughs) The book is mine. Is that, this is a stupid question, is that Bruce Campbell's voice as a doppelganger, like bad guy? It is until he comes back as just a skeleton, and then it's Sam Raimi for some reason. I got a bone to pick with you. Oh. Okay, but that is that's not Bruce Campbell in the costume. It is. Yeah. It is. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm actually shocked by that. Yeah, no, that's him. <laughs> now, uh, Bruce, in this scene, I want you to act very scary, uh, but not too scary. <laughs> Just the right amount, if you know what I mean. Oh, and uh, put that special dark humor edge on it that you're so uh, good at. Let me try it, Sam. All right, then. Hey, you bony devil. That's another thing they just kind of brush over is he just stabbed her through the stomach and threw her off the top of the uh-huh. castle. And then at the end of the movie, she just turns normal again and is alive. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he killed the evil spirit within her. But he stabbed her through the stomach and threw her off the top of a castle. All said and done, pretty good sword fight. Oh, yeah. Sure. As goofy as this movie is, I always thought this was a, a decent little action scene. And here you have all the music drop out. Yep. Sam Raimi's always good, been good about that. Like when to use music and when to mm-hmm. just not have any music. <laughs> we 
here's Ted Raimi again. Now with an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now for some reason, he's just a complete skeleton, and it's voiced by Sam Raimi. Because Sam Raimi is is Bruce Campbell's ultimate antagonist. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> and Sam loves to torture Bruce. Like, he loves torturing him. So with Bruce just boom, 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 beating Bruce up, and I think finally Bruce went, "All right, Sam, I've had enough. We've we've got it, pal." He's like, "All right, buddy, you're a good sport, pal." It's not the proper sword type for that era, I don't think. <laughs> My immersion is ruined. <laughs> yeah, the movie is ruined. <laughs> it's like a machete or something. Although they never really established where they are. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they they have Arthur, but it's not like the King Arthur. Yeah. He's just named Arthur. Yeah, she just now she's just okay. Because the evil has been defeated, Jay. Did that repair all of her injuries? Just deal with it. <laughs> it, it makes it funnier when he abandons her so he can go to work at s Marks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Why bring her back at all if he's just going to leave her in the next scene? No, he uh, he he he's a jerk. He's selfish, but he knows when to make the right decisions. You mean when he becomes less interesting? Right. <laughs> well, I know Bruce Campbell said in the commentary track for this that he wanted his character to be hiding somewhere for the entire last act. <laughs> 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 That would have been good. Sam wanted, at one point, Ash to lead with a group of children out to the front of the castle, open the gates, and all the, the deadites are astounded. They're all, huh? They all look, and Ash comes out with flowers with all the children. They, they want it. It's a peace offering. <laughs> and then, eventually, the deadites turn, and so Ash has to run back into the castle and close the doors, and all the children are stuck on the outside of the castle. Thankfully, we, we talked him out of that one as well. <laughs> but. I guess that's kind of similar to like uh, Big Trouble in Little China, where half yeah. of the the climax of the movie, uh, Kurt Russell's passed out. <laughs> the book tells us that once you drink this liquid and recite the words "Klatu Verata Nikto," thou shalt awaken in thine own time. Now here we have some ADR to set up the reshot ending. I'm assuming you've both seen the yeah, yeah. the the original intended ending. Which do you prefer? What is the best ending? Um. <sighs> The theatr- this U.S. theatrical cut ending is more entertaining. Yeah. yeah. The original ending is appropriate for Ash as a character. Yeah. I like both of them. I don't know if I could pick. Is Although it- if you want to go with, like, canon, this is the canon ending because it leads into Ash versus Evil Dead. Isn't the, the original ending just too much of a rehash of Evil Dead 2's ending, though? I mean, it's basically the same joke. Uh, kind of, yeah. except, yeah. I mean, in that, he's, you know, surrounded by people that are now worshiping him. And right. In, in, <laughs> in the post-apocalypse, he's just completely alone because he fucked up. <laughs> he slept too long. Does it say how long he slept for? He slept, each drop that he has to take is like 100 years or something. That's and he right, takes one yeah. too many. So he wakes up 100 years later than he's supposed to. A post-apocalyptic Ash versus Evil Dead would have been a cool movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's Ted Raimi again. But then we don't get the be- one of the best lines in the movie. That's true. Yeah. Hail to the king, baby. What video game character just ripped off all of his lines? Oh, Duke Nukem. Is that Duke Nukem? Yeah. Okay. Hail to the king, baby. How did they get away with that? Just blatantly stealing. Yeah. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. <laughs> And I'm all out of gum. Can you copyright lines? <laughs> Can you copyright Hail to the King, baby? I don't know. I mean, if there's multiple lines that all come from the same source, it feels like you should have a case. But You, you, can't, you can't copyright Groovy. Yeah. That's true. Lady, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave the store. Who the hell are you? Name's Ash. Housewares. 
This is another moment where he does like an action thing that doesn't make any sense. Where he throws the gun up in the air for no reason, yeah. <laughs> just just so he can catch it again because yeah. it looks cool. He thr- <laughs> jumps on the car. He, he throws it ahead of himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a. <laughs> For, for what they're doing, it's great. It I goes on just, I, I, just I, the right amount. It's, just, it's the end. It's the, she she sure, bounced on a trampoline sure. at some point. Uh, I think she already did. Oh, no, oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is almost like, oh, you want us to reshoot the ending to make it happier? Well, we're gonna do yeah. this, and it's just like ridiculous. And there he's wearing his Ash costume. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I don't know why that became his like official outfit. It's, it's a diff- it's not always the same shirt, but it's always like a blue shirt yeah. and brown pants. That's quite the complicated blue shirt. There's those <laughs> buttons all over. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, how would you recognize him if he wasn't wearing a blue shirt and brown pants? Uh, oh, because he's Bruce Campbell. <laughs> I also love that Sam Raimi wrote this with his brother, who's not a professional screenwriter. He's like a (laughs) doctor or something. (laughs) He just wrote it with him, because why not? (laughs) So that was... uh, I almost said Evil Dead 2. Why didn't we talk about Evil Dead 2? It's like Return of the Jedi. The first first chunk is all in Jabba's palace, and it's like like most of the movie. Uh Yeah. Then they're on Endor for a little bit, and then the rest is the battle. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's kind of what this is like. There's a big <laughs> scene in the beginning that's like 20 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. Then, eh, crap in the... <laughs> crap in the middle. <laughs> the little ashes. Crap. There's a windmill. His... <laughs> There's a windmill. There's a the windmill crap in the little ashes. And then now we're into the big battle, and that's the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. My name is Sam Raimi. I'm the director of such movies as Evil Dead, Crime Wave, Mort de la Grille, Evil Dead 2, and most recently, Dark Man. Maybe you've heard about them. When I'm shooting a movie, I just don't have time to massage my scalp with hair lotions. It's not the type of conduct that one would assume in a major motion picture production. You just don't do that. This attitude is irresponsible. So if you're the witness to this scene. Même quand je dirige un film, je trouve toujours le temps le matin pour ma lotion pétrolane. Je tiens trop à mes cheveux. I will not betray the Republic. You know, my loyalties. So you're turning on, but it's. I have rewritten. I spent the whole weekend rewriting the scene between you and Palpatine, um, where you turn. Yeah. And I, when I shoot, I have uh, two cameras: A camera and B camera. Right to the foundation against directors who don't do shit on their shoot. As James Cameron, Sam Raimi, and Luke Besson of Le Grand Bleu subscribe to the foundation against directors who don't do shit on their shoot right now. If the Dark Man segment was short, here's a little more. Thank you for your attention.